Hello and welcome back to the Not Wolf Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. We've had a 10 day break or so on the website and the channel, and now back ahead of the Euros and the new season coming up. As you can tell, not very hard to see who I'll be supporting at the Euros, and you can check out all of our Scotland content that will be coming out over the next sort of couple of weeks into July as we win the Euros. And so we'll have all the build up and the lead up to Scotland winning uh, the major trophy in July in its first tournament since 1998. Plenty of interviews um, coming out over the next sort of week, especially. Um, so do check them out now that we're, we're back after a wee break. But before that, there's still plenty of domestic action coming uh, thick and fast and reflecting on last season and whatnot. The first of that with former Ross County vice captain Callum Morris, only former as in um, a couple of days. Um, but he reflects on his time at Ross County. It's been a bizarre few weeks, really, for Ross County. Looked as if John Hughes was going to get the manager's gig. It went to Malky Mackay. Players have already went to press about unhappiness about how they were released from Ross County. Callum Morris offered perhaps a bit more of a, kind of a grounded approach, um, a bit more laid back uh, and a bit more reflective about the situation, perhaps had a bit more time to think about what's been on. And he talks to us about his next step, how he's still using the facilities at County some of the challenges that this season threw up as they survived in the Scottish Premiership on the last day, and how his next move might not necessarily uh, be in the SPFL. So we hope you do enjoy. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, take it easy. Um, as I was saying before we hit recording, quite a few few weeks to sort of reflect on what was probably a, a stop-start season for you personally. Yeah, I think it's been um, it's been stop-start since... I probably came up here three years ago, to be honest with you. Um, but no, it was a tough season all in all. Um, I think every time I, on a personal note, when I got going, something happened and to finish the season the way I finished it first, it wasn't great. But um, being a bit of a roller coaster as a squad of a season, but to, um, to kind of secure Premier League football again for us, County was obviously the aim. And that was some, we managed to get it over the line, which was great. Okay, I was just like thinking, looking at appearance wise, I think even in your last spell at Dunfermline, even though you spent, I think it was 12 months or something less, I think you've only made, and you actually maybe made one more appearance for them than you did at Ross County. Um, yeah, it's crazy. The the stop start nature, you still managed to work your way up to vice captain right enough at, at Ross County. Um, even yeah, no, I, no, it was great. Um, I've probably been captain a few places, captain Dunfermline and stuff like that, so maybe comes a little bit more natural to me than others, but. Um, but yeah, the injuries have been, it's not like I've just got little needles either. I've had three operations since I've been a county, so it's not been just little things. So um, two hamstring reconstructions, I've had my hand fixed from blocking a shot. I've had all sorts done. But uh, to be fair, it, it, was a, it was a great three years, in all honesty. It's, in, it's a great place to play a football. Um, it's a really nice club, facilities-wise, brilliant. It's a nice place. Like It's a bit quiet compared to most of the place you'll find yourself, but um, but it's stunning. Like so, can't complain. Okay, I think that's the the one thing with county. It's not like moving to any other club. Like you're you're pretty much moving yourself up there, and it's you yourself. Because I mean, being in Dingwall a few times, like there's still a wimpy in the Tim Centre and things like that. Like, it is, yeah, yeah. It's a bit stuck in the like stuck in the nineties almost when you're up there. But um, it is a big decision to go. Um, I don't think people quite realise how big a decision it is. Yeah, I think it's like the the common thing you're doing in Scottish football is to maybe be in the central belt and regardless of where you go you can travel so a lot of boys probably don't move house or anything like that but like you say when you move up here the majority of the boys live in Inverness um there's not really many that live over on the Black Isle side of the of the of the bridge but um yeah if you're going to come up you've got to commit to it which I think helps in a way it helps with the camaraderie helps with the the team spirit everyone's local and uh, we always do stuff together whether that's as a squad or with people's kids and partners and um it's like one big family almost so that kind of helps i think when it gets to kind of the more turbulent points in the season you can lean on each other a bit more maybe because uh you're on each other all the time in and out of the club mm. i think um especially this season like speaking to, to john before that stuart like this season especially being up there committing in a normal times one thing but like like trialists and stuff in January, I can mind John was saying we're having to like go to B and B's and walk up to the stadium and things like that. Different, yeah, different challenges this season. Totally, I think to be fair, even some of the lone boys have come up 
from Glasgow or Edinburgh, whatever, and they've literally not been able to go home. They've not seen family. So I, I don't, I'm not sure they quite thought that's what they were getting into at the start of it. Um, but the flip side of that is they've been completely focused on the football, which is probably beneficial. There's not many distractions when you're in like a, a bubble and you can't go for a coffee, you can't go out for food, you're kind of in the house doing what you do and then training games, that's about it. So it gives people who are still trying to kind of carve a career in, in football the opportunity just to solely focus on on what they're doing on the pitch and in training. So um, there's two very different sides to it with, with the lockdown and with COVID. But um, if you look at the positives of it, you can come out of that situation having utilised and, and come out a better player, I suppose. The likes of um, young Stevie come up from Rangers. He's done brilliant. And I know he was desperate to get home, but kept his head down and worked hard and did really well coming into the season. Um, played an integral part of us staying up. Yeah. No, I don't know. Cause I know like, um, Charlie Lack and stuff that came up for like, Birmingham and uh, I didn't expect when I asked John Hughes about Leo Kelly to call him the next Virgil van Dijk. But, um, no. I don't think anyone expected that. Neither did that. Literally, it, it, was a, it was weird because it was a presser. I think it was March. There was no games. There was no game for, scheduled for uh, the, the weekend or even the yeah. thing. There was a three-week break. So, uh, you know what John's like, having spoke to him um, enough over the last six months. Rambles on and on and on, and then yeah. but at the end of a twenty-six minute Zoom call, <laughs> it, it comes out with that. But um, just shows you. I mean, I, I don't know what you. I don't know if he's quite Van Dyke yet, but he must have been. No, I don't think he's. Uh, but I, I mean, it's it's a it's a lot of pressure putting him on the shoulders, calling him Van Dyke. But um, he's got a lot of attributes that I would say you can't really coach. Like he's he's so composed. So being seventeen, if you didn't know his age, you would think he was old. I think he'd played a couple of hundred games. Um, so all the stuff that he's got in his in his locker, that like I say, is probably uncoachable. Is gonna could take him. They're like those extra little bits that can take you right at the top. But I think so. If you if he makes the right moves and he and he gets his head down, he can he can definitely go a long way in the game. Um, especially coming in the county when we're in a relegation battle, being chucked in at left back and left centre back and all. Um, at that age, and he conducted himself really well. So, uh, yeah, I think he's got a big future. Van Dyke, not sure, big future. Yeah. Uh, not, Callum, <laughs> not Callum Morris either, but I, I mean, no, it was, it was just a bit bizarre. But I mean, it was a lot of credit to the boys, I suppose, and the guys that kept these up because it was uh, over that Christmas and New Year period when Stuart was out and then John came in. It didn't exactly, it wasn't all plain sailing with John, but eventually got him then. No, it was a lot of kind of um, mix and match and patching the team up. And I think it was only the last two or three games that he played the same team in consecutive games. Um, so there's a lot of change in shape, trying to find a solution to problems that he was trying to fix because he didn't have much time to do it. And we've got some really good results. I'll beat Celtic twice, beat Hibs away, we'll beat Aberdeen. So there was some really good results, but it was. It was the games where maybe we expect ourselves to pick up points that we didn't, which were the disappointing ones. Um, but like you say, we kind of managed to somehow find a solution and stay up last day of the season. So um, it felt like the longest season I've ever played in, to be fair, just with an extended, obviously all of lockdown and then a massive extended pre-season and then straight into the season. Then you've got the cup games in the when you should have it national breaks and so it was a drag, but um, to finish it off by staying at last game of the season was was pretty special. Yeah, I know in that Mullow game, it just seemed to be like I was at the game and it just seemed to be that it was almost like you had just clicked into gear on the last day of the season. Like maybe if you'd had that run, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of gear training, sort of. Yeah. Though I ponder on it too much, but perhaps if you'd if you'd have clicked that together, I think you said the, the best form out of Hamilton and Kilmarnock in that sort of bottom six period. So if you had maybe managed to do that, maybe it just trying and uh, results. I think that was the first time you'd won three games in the league. Back to back, yeah. Consecutively, so shows that. It, oh yeah, that was definitely. Yeah, it wasn't like. It was. No, it was the consistency. Like we were so up and down. We played really well one week, and then we'd be terrible the next week, and. Like you know yourself in football, if you if you're consistent, you'll go a long way. And we were the complete polar opposite of that, where we'd go to Parkhead and win one week, and then we'd go and get beat off Hamilton the next. So, um, 
the consistency was the one thing that probably let us down. Um, also mistakes, like the past two seasons, the defensive record's been absolutely atrocious. I don't know how many goals it is. It must be touching 130 goals in two seasons. It's something crazy. Um, and it's not like many of those goals were, were, were good play from the opposition. I think most goals we can see were all mistakes. And we've all been culprits of it. So that is something that we're trying to put right at the start of last season. Obviously didn't. But it needs to be rectified this season because you can't go on conceding that many goals and expecting to have positive outcomes in a season. So um, that's disappointing on a person, I know. But uh, like I say, staying up, that's what the club wanted. And that's what they got. So... Got him then, but I'm assuming then Ross Laidlaw paid for his Player of the Year trophies and things like that at the end of the season there? Or? I don't think we even voted. I think he just got given that we did. We voted him. He, he was the only one that could have won it, to be fair. Well, the record, the, the stats probably killed him a bit, but he was, he, especially the back end of the season, he was brilliant. Um, So I don't think it even came close to anyone else picking that award up last season, to be totally honest with you. There was only one standout candidate, so fair play to him. He was... um. He's been brilliant. He's probably had a bit of an up and down time since he signed in that first season, in and out of the team. But this season, he's been a, been a different player. He was he was he was superb. So uh, definitely deserved. Like, yeah, I, I think even harking back to the, the start of the season when it came out of lockdown, I think County were eleventh or around that area when football shut down March last year and sort of yeah coming into. The new season, and I know even for clubs down the central belt, it was a case that you were only changing and then um, pods and things like that. You weren't allowed to basically contact train until the, the week before the season started and things like that. Yeah. So it wasn't exactly, I know that doesn't just apply to Ross County specifically, but for all teams at the start to the season, was wasn't exactly ideal. No, I think it was more of, I think for most teams, obviously it's different for the old firm and stuff, they're challenging for titles, whatever, but for most of us provincial teams it was probably about just getting through the season and making sure you're in the league and then hopefully fingers crossed COVID starting to die down come the start of next season again and you can have the fans back and stuff and then you can it's almost like a real season it's like last season was just so up in the air with everything whether that's COVID and travelling and you can't get showers you can't do this you can't do that Um, I think as much as it wasn't a great season to stay in the league and then give the club the platform to rebuild now and go ahead with a season that's maybe more conventional, um, it's probably the best outcome, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. Um, it was probably it was some effort in the end. I mean, round about that December time, County were probably favourites to go down. Um, I, think it probably, I think it was like the best start he's had, Ross County had made to a Premiership season since sort of the league get rebranded and maybe 10 years ago or something, but yeah. Remember time when John came in, it didn't, it looked a bit bleak, but Stuart's obviously somebody that you worked with um, throughout your time there, and probably not ideal to see him go. No, I think um, it was tough, I think, when when he got the job on his own, and Stephen Ferguson moved upstairs, it was, it gave him a chance to kind of put his own stamp on the, the team, which he probably did, and at the start of the season, we are playing great football, and we got, I remember again, we got beat off Celtic like at home, like it's like 5 1 or 5 0 or something, and, and we were the better team by a four. But it's the same thing we conceded from corners and set plays and mistakes, whereas we were actually really good in the game and we we're playing good football. And I think once that good run started to end, maybe people got a bit jittery because we couldn't buy a goal, we couldn't buy a win. We were on, I think it was 18 games or something without a win, it was some crazy run. Um, and we weren't terrible, but it's a small margins. We'd miss chances and can see chances. So he was unlucky because I think he built a decent squad and and it was nowhere near the worst squad in that league. And I think if we could maybe have strung a few more results together, we could have done something a bit better than what we did. Um, but then that's football, to results business. If you, you go on a run like that and then obviously the game where we did kind of get sacked was that Hamilton at home. was That was built up to be like the whoever wins that stays up sort of thing um, and to lose it at home was was the final nail for him which is a shame because I enjoyed my time working under him and I agreed with a lot of the stuff he was doing um, but like I say like it's cutthroat it's ruthless football so um, and then obviously Yogi came in and put his stamp on things and changed, changed bits and pieces here and there and probably a breath of fresh air when you've been on such a bad run and 
Um, obviously picked up some good results, some very indifferent results, but like I say, to, to go on that run in the split and I don't know what we picked up, or 10 points or whatever it was from five games or something, it was unbelievable to be fair and to, to stay up on the last day. And I think we only finished five points off fifth or something. I know that they were in the top half and they're playing the big club spot. To finish with a deficit of only five points to, to fifth place but wasn't bad in the end. No. I think that Hamilton game is a bit of a weird one because I'm based in Mullow, so I'm a wee bit away, but we've got somebody that goes to the Ross County games for us and seen the news breaking at five, but perhaps more shocked that Stuart had then done press at quarter past five. Like, I mean, how I know the game obviously didn't go well, but I mean, the next hour I can imagine was probably quite turbulent because it just seems to be walked off the park, got told the news, and then he was in front of the press literally 30 minutes later. Yeah, it was weird. The game itself. We were a much better team first off, and it was the same thing. It was a mistake and a goal, and you're, you're chasing your tail, and they hit us on the counter attack again, and that was it. But yeah, it was strange. I just remember him coming in, and no one quite knew what was going on. And then the whispers that he'd been told, he'd been relieved of his, his position, so to speak. So yeah, it was a strange one, but I think everyone involved probably knew that run had to stop at some point, and the way football is. The book stops with the manager. So um I think deep down most of us knew if we lost that game that might be the end of his tenure. But um yeah, it was a bit surreal the way it all happened. And and then for John to come in so quickly afterwards, it, it, it was probably a positive because it didn't give you time to sit and reflect on it all. He was in I don't know if you've noticed the next day, maybe. And uh, all the day after, maybe two days. So we're straight in and it was straight back on with the job, which is probably what we needed. There wasn't time in between where people can get down about it and in a bit of a mood and negativity was kind of flowing about the place. It was, he came in and injected it and in a way we went again, which was probably what we needed at that time. Can I ask, where did John call you when you were at Ross County? That may seem like a bizarre question, but did he call yeah, you? Yeah, he, nah, he didn't, to be fair. He just he got my name right, but it was a lot of names he got. He made his own name well, up, like. Well, he maybe not said it to you, but he done he done press after the Mullow game, and then um, he said, "Who's that big lad we sold to to Sunderland?" He was talking about players and stuff that he was missing through. The yeah. Season. That big lad we sold to Sunderland, Ross Stewart, and uh, Callum Morrison. Um, ah, he said that. He said, in fact, <laughs> you're right. He did Callum. like an end of season thing, the end of season like TV thing for the or the Ross County TV, and he said something. We were interviewing him, and he was about me. Getting injured, and he did. I'm sure he said Callum Morrison, but you just confirmed it. So yeah, he <laughs> de- didn't de- who I was at all. De- definitely did. Like he, he was getting asked, obviously, oh, are you going to? St- he, um, sounds like you're staying next season. He's like, oh, I'd love to have been playing today, and it's like Jesus, really. <laughs> um, by it is, even though he'd been out of the game for three years, if John Hughes can't motivate you, then nobody's going to motivate you. I don't. Think. Yeah, like he. I enjoyed, like, obviously I was injured a lot of it, but I really enjoyed my time under him. I thought he was good. I liked the way he did things. I liked the way... I think he's a lot more calculated than what people thought. He was he was testing people all the time. He was watching people all the time. Um, and he he tried to man-manage quite well with other players. And certain players, he'd give them the kick up the backside. And other players, he'd put the arm around and stuff. So, like... It's a tough situation for him to come into, obviously, the position we're in. That's a four points of drift or whatever it was. And he had a big squad. So it wasn't just about getting everyone motivated for a Saturday. It was about trying to keep the whole squad motivated because you've got to need everyone in that run-in. So um, to give him his juice, he did a good job in the end. And like I say, the, his target was, and the goal was to keep us in the league. And he did that. So um, you can't ask for much more, really. I think everybody because he gives because he's not like a PR trained manager or that because yeah. he gives the silly interviews and things like that and the in the different quotes and things like that, I think people perhaps discredit him a wee bit. Yeah. Um, but he is a proper like, he is a proper serious coach like behind it. Oh yeah. I don't know if I don't know if that's maybe him or maybe that's a ploy. I don't know. Maybe it's that's one of his things he does just to give off a different persona in front of the camera or whatever or um or maybe that's just him. I don't know, but I definitely think he he knows exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it most of the time. Um, but that was my perception of him anyway. So, um, but no, he was good. He was good fun as well. Like you know, he's he get a good laugh out of him anyway. 
I can imagine. Um, I was quite surprised, I think, um, Celtic Colts, the Lowland League team. That they're, yeah, I saw that. Uh, um, he's potentially going to be first team coach. Um, I know it's all that, obviously, I think that would quite suit him, but um, I'm surprised if he'd take a job in the Lowland League, despite it being Celtic, because I think he showed that he's still he's still capable of um, managing at the top level of Scottish football when perhaps people had, had written him off there. Yeah, I think to be fair, it's been it probably suited both parties. I don't, I don't know, like I'm not privy to what happened with him leaving and all that kind of stuff, but his stock was high from the end of the season for what he'd done at the club, and there was a number of jobs out there that I thought you might have a go at, like Doug Fulman, Falkirk, even United. He was banded about with and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know. He does love Celtic, like <laughs> <laughs> to put that tracksuit on or whatever. He, I, he'd love that, but um. But yeah, I think he's this, there's still a lot of years left in him coaching anyway. I enjoyed waiting on them. Yeah, I was under the impression that it was just, um, even in December, it was like, if you keep us up, then job's yours if you want it, basically. And even in yeah. the last game of the season, it was I thought it was just a case of when he's going to get appointed rather than if. Yeah. So you were quite surprised as well to, to see him sort of walk away from it. Yeah, I think so. I there were so many routes, like the lads talking, there's so many people thinking he's staying, he's not staying, he's staying, he's not staying. Um, but then when uh, it all went quiet for a while, this was the longer it goes on, the more you're thinking, well, surely it's not looking good from Tuesday, because why wouldn't he? If, uh, like you say, everyone thought, right, he's kept this up, that'll be him getting the job, but football's a strange business. You can never, you can never count on anything, so I'm sure whatever happened was happened for the right reasons for, for him and for the club. So uh, it was surprising, but like football moves so quickly. There's a new manager in now and he's going to do what he wants to do with the club, take it probably a different direction to what John would have. So um, it was surprising, yeah, but I'm sure he'll get something else and like no one's bigger than the club at the end of the day. So the club will move forward and I'm sure it'll, uh, it'll be all news soon enough and everyone will, I'll go the wrong way again. Mm-hmm. I know you've you've departed the club now, but were you aware that you were perhaps going to be on the move even before the end of the season, the last game against Mull, or were you sort of just waiting to see what happened if you stayed up or not? I think uh, no one really knew. There'd been no conversations. I think you get a feeling yourself, don't you? Like I've, what had happened with me injury wise and stuff like that. Um, it was probably a good fit for both parties to move on their separate ways because if I came back again and then you, it's like you're kind of resetting it for the third time after being out for so long, up in the three years, it was probably the right thing for me to move on and for the club to to kind of offload me at the same time and to, to go a different way. So everyone's different. Each and every player that got released probably had different thoughts in their mind, but on a first, like me personally, I kind of knew it was coming. Um, and it's probably the right fit for the club. The club's got to go its own way now. I think off the back of obviously winning the championship and the two seasons in the SPL have just passed, this is probably the end of a cycle. They've got a, a crop of older players in their 30s um, who are still good enough and fit enough to keep playing, but I think the club needed a bit of a change, um, probably needed a freshen up. The new manager's come in, he wants to put a stamp on it. Um, and I think what they're probably going to put in place, the club's going to be a better place again next season and, and hopefully they have another good season and so they build on what we've kind of done staying in the league last year. And like I say, they've got that platform now to move forward. And um, I'm sure Malky and, and Don will do a great job in there. Um, Don especially, obviously, he was a player when he first came in and did brilliant and then moved into a coach quite seamlessly and has, has done great behind the scenes himself. So, I think the players that are staying and the new recruits that they're bringing in will probably enhance it a little bit, freshen up a bit, a few younger players and hopefully the ones that maybe didn't get as many games last season can can build on that this year and, and start playing and, and show everyone how good they are. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a fair bit of um, noise, I'm sure you've probably read and seen comments from sort of teammates from last season with, with different bits and bobs. I think Ian Vigers was, was probably the the most telling it was what was he said? It's a family club is it a family club just when they decide it is you're just a number and that was most evident. Now not asking you for anything particularly stronger than that, but it painted a picture. I think Jason Naismith was speaking about the sort of the Zoom calls basically that everyone happened on as well. Um 
I don't know if that was the case for you, whether it was Zoom calls or that, but um, it definitely seemed like it was just see you later, out the door type thing. Yeah. I, I was at the pub. I've, I've not been off yet. I'm still rehabbing from my, from my surgery. Mm-hmm. So I've been in every day. I'm still in now, even though I'm being released. I'm still going in. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's been a bit of a strange one, but um, it's one of those, I think, when you're in a position, when you're a bit older, you've maybe committed to the area, you've got family and stuff. Um, I'm sure some of the boys thought they'd done enough to to get a new deal. But whether that was a decision was made on performances or from what I gather, it's probably the club just going a complete different way, just um, a clean slate. And I can understand that off the back. I mean, like you say, like before COVID, we're 11th before obviously locked down and then this season we've stayed up on the last day of the season so would it be right to then re-sign a load of players that although we stayed in the league which was a success was it a successful season as in what we aspired to do come the start of it probably not so the club has to move on and and keep trying to progress in the right direction and if they feel that that is to offload the nucleus of a squad that's been there for three years and they feel it's the right thing to do then it's up to them it's their prerogative um, like I say on a personal note I kind of saw it coming so I mean it wasn't a big shock to me or anything and I can totally understand why the boys feel that way because when you're not hearing anything they probably expected John to get the job and then there was a bit of a radio silence where the club um, probably did the due diligence and, and did what was right for them um, that probably didn't sit well with some of them but I think it was quite raw as well when they've obviously done these interviews. I think some of them were the same day. Nice. So you're going to be feeling a bit emotional off the back of it. I mean, a lot of them, like obviously Midge and, and Vase had both spent numerous years at the club in different spells. So they kind of have a big place in the hall for the club. And I suspect they probably would have liked to maybe finish their careers off there. I don't know. Um, so it's tough to take, but we've all been there before. And football's not going to change for anyone. So um, it's just the way it goes. Sometimes it doesn't fall your way, I suppose, and other times it does. So I suppose the other way to look at it is it's, it's, it's an exciting time. It's a fresh start for everyone who's not there anymore. You're going to have to go your own way now and find something else, whether that's in football, outside of football, part-time football, whatever it is. Um, for me, it's an exciting time. Um, it's another step on the journey and see where you end up and see what you can achieve going forward. So. Um, yeah, it's tough, but it is what it is, I think, at the end of the day. That's football. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming then you're still up north um, rehabbing and stuff. You're just sort of like, you're just yeah. in, in, in I'm just West. still going in as, I'm just still going in as normal, as if nothing's changed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, I, the club have been great with me anyway. Like, I could, they've said I can use facilities as long as I need to, but I'm still, I'll be fine for pre season going forward. But you want to make sure you're, you're, you're perfect before you go back, especially after an invasive operation. And they've been great with me in that sense. So I'm not going to turn down the offer. Um, and plus my partner, she's a teacher, so she's still teaching up here. She teaches in Inverness. So um, I'm going to be here anyway for the foreseeable. So nothing's really changed for me, to be totally honest with you. Um, until whatever happens, happens. And then, and then it'll be... It'll be another part of the of the story. Mm. I'm assuming. Uh, I mean, I know you've spent. I mean, how long is that, is that now? Approaching ten years, sort in Scotland. So I'm assuming. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm assuming you're like you're settled here, and it will whether that's Premiership, Championship, whatever it is. I'm assuming it's going to be wanting to. You can't exactly. There's not many professional clubs to pick up out uh, up north, but um, I'm assuming I'll be staying in Scotland. Not necessarily. Mm. Not necessarily. Um, I'm quite open to anything, to be totally honest. I'm probably exhaust every channel before I do anything, commit to anything. Obviously, the the, the easy option, the easy transition would be to, to a club in Scotland, but whether that's right for me, my age and what I want to aspire to do and what I want to try and achieve, just going and signing somewhere for another year of football, I don't know if that really is what I want right now. I want something with a bit more longevity to it. Um Obviously, when you get in your 30s, you're looking at transitioning into a different career. Like, it's not like we've all played for like 
Man City and we're just going to retire and live in the villa in Portugal or whatever. So um, you've got to be wise with what you do, especially when you come into your 30s or whatever. So I'm going to take my time over it anyway. I've got, I'm in no rush. I'm in a position where I don't need to rush into anything. I can take my time over the next few weeks, if that's three, four, five, six weeks, whatever, and I'll make a decision that fits for me and what I want to do rather than jump on the gun just to get my just to get in the door somewhere and and get them for pre-season. It, I'm not overly fussed about um, coming in anytime soon. If, if something comes up and I feel like it's the right fit, then I'll do it. If not, I'll bide my time, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether you were alluding to things abroad or anything there, whether it's down south or things like that, but if it was, I mean, does the current situation sort of affect that a bit? Because I can imagine even going down south now, Pretty much anywhere than it would be. Um, yeah, difficult. I think yeah, COVID could curtail certain things depending on where you want to go. But also, there's 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 ways around it all. I mean, like most places, you could end up if you quarantine for ten days when you get there. That's you, depending how how much control they've got over it. Also, there's options out there. Like it, I'm someone who I'll happily go off on an adventure somewhere and try something new. I think there's nothing better than doing that. Um, because like the UK is not going anywhere, my house isn't going anywhere, and um, we can always come back. So I quite like the idea of trying something different. But whether I can get that fixed up, I don't know. But um, like I say, regardless of where it is, it'll have to be something that fits me. So um, yeah, it's exciting, but it's interesting at the same time to see what we can do. And it's probably the first time that I've been out of contract when I've been so relaxed about it. Um, it can get a bit nervy at times, especially when you come into your contract and you're thinking, when am I going to get paid again? Like I've got bills to pay, all this kind of stuff. But um, but this time, uh, it's quite refreshing. I feel good in the situation I'm in and I don't need to jump into anything. So it's, uh, apart from not being able to get away, it's been not a bad summer. <laughs>